Okay, yeah. You made me speechless um, the beginning of the session itself. Um, technically speechless, not otherwise. But yeah, thank you uh, for a wonderful session, Madanji and um, Sunil Bhai. Good morning, good evening, everybody. Radhe Radhe, a very warm welcome to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to start with the recap of chapter two, which is also known as the heart of Bhagavad Gita. Like we have been doing for the benefit of participants who have joined relatively new, we will be covering the salient features or the key highlights of every chapter. And to, uh, today we are going to start off with something very interesting, something very practical as well. You know, I had announced it a couple of weeks back. Now we are kind of getting a framework around it. Um, Sri Ramayaji, if she's around, she can talk a little bit more about it. But it is going to be something very practical. Um, for on an ongoing basis for us and you would realize the benefits and I'm sure as a group we will have a lot of good things to share with each other so um, it's about time to take it to the next level so I will talk about it um, you know once we have pretty much everybody on the session that way we all can benefit from it but this activity uh, I would strongly encourage you to um, you know engage get engaged in it and reap the benefits of it we are going to implement some of the tools that bhakti gives us, that scriptures give us, and systematically tackle some of these things so that we can start realizing tangible benefits in our life. So it's like living and breathing Bhagavad Gita and taking benefit from it as well so that when you walk around, um, you know, we, we become, we are able to um, say that, you know, we are able to imbibe those learnings as well. And this is what I learned and this is how I apply it in my life. So anyway, we are going to get into that. Um, let's get started with our opening prayers by invoking the blessings of God and Guru, and then we'll get to the topic of our discussion today. Let me share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Not yet, Nitinji. Yes, now we can see. Okay, wonderful. So let me get started with our opening prayers. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Ishwarha, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Vasudev Sutam Devam, Kam Suchanu Ramardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Radhe Radhe, a very warm welcome to all of you once again. So let's get started. I picked up the opening shloka. Uh, okay, I'll get into that. So today we are going to talk about, uh, like I said, we are doing a chapter two recap. It's a catch-up series. How a catch-up would be a very in-depth discussion on some of the key topics um, on chapter two. We are going to make sure that we cover all of those so that foundationally uh, we are all on the even keel. So today we are going to talk about no, what happened? I don't know why this, this came up. So this happens when you create multiple things and then you lose context of what you are going to talk about. But never, nevertheless, you can ignore that. This is something we are going to do tomorrow. So we are going to get started with chapter two, verse one. So I'm going to recite it and then you are welcome to follow along. Oh. Sanjay Uvacha Tam tatha kripaya vishtam Ashrupuna kulekshanam Vishidantam idam vakyam Uvacha madhusudanaha. So we'll take three participants for this and three for the next shloka so that we can cover the content and talk about some of the practical implementation aspects that we are going to launch. Uh, today, I had announced it a couple of weeks back, uh, but today we will give it a formal shape. Yes. Yes. Radhi Radhi, Ashutosh ji, please go ahead. 
राधे राधे संजय उवाच तंग तथा कृपया विष्णम अश्रुपूर्णाकुले क्षण very nice thank you ashutosh ji we'll take two more hands and then the remaining three we'll take for the next shloka shyam ji radhe radhe please radhe shyam ji radhe 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 sanje uvach tam tatha kripya vishtam ashru purna kule kshanam वाक्यम उवाच राधे 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 श्याम जी ऑल राइट कैन प्रॉब्ली टेक वन मोर हैंड ऑन दिस उदय जी राधे राधे प्लीज राधे जी उदय राधे संजय उवाच तम तथा कृपया विष्ट अश्रु पूर्णा कुले क्षण विशिदंतम इदम वाक्यम ंग and his eyes full of tears shri krishna spoke the following words so this is the state of arjun he is grief stricken his eyes are full of tear and he is overwhelmed with pity looking at his relatives okay so we will un- try to understand this pity or the overwhelming feeling that arjun is having because we all can relate to it in our lives okay and we will see it in perspective there is a big learning around this concept okay because what arjun is feeling we do feel it all the times because unless we align to a higher principle with proper knowledge and understanding we have no choice but to feel this way when we see something miserable around okay that emotion that overcomes us is that of pity and that's what we will see it in perspective that's where we'll have a little bit of discussion as well nevertheless let's move on to 2.2 now god when he sees him in this state so there is an emotion that arjun is feeling all right and there is an emotion now god is feeling as well he is going to recite he is going to talk about it and let's say what god says in this one shri bhagavan uvacha इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग हेर इज इफ यू लुक एट संजय इन दिस होल थिंग वेद व्यास हेज बीन रेफरिंग टू वेन समबडी इज स्पीकिंग लाइक अर्जुन वॉच संजय वॉच dhritarashtra vacha here is saying shri bhagavan vacha and we know who is bhagavan we will we will do a quick recap of that as well he is not saying krishna vacha no he is saying shri bhagavan vacha and who is bhagavan also we will discuss this concept nevertheless let's uh, let's get a few hands the remaining hands who can recite it and then we move forward with the topic of a discussion today yes thank you राधे राधे श्री रम्या जी प्लीज को राधे राधे श्री भगवान विषमे सामुपाश्रितुष्टमास्वर्ग्यम अकीर्ति करम अर्जुन थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू श्री रम्या वेरी नाइस अकीर्ति कर मर्जुन राधे राधे 
Okay, thank you very much, Hinishi. Palji, right. Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kutastva Kashmalam Midam Vishume Samap Upastitam Anarya Jushtam Swargyam Akirti Karma Arjuna. Nice Radhe Radhe. Let's take the last two hands and then we'll get started. Yes, Riyaji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kutasva Kashmala Midam Vishame Samupashtitam Anarya Dushtamasvagyam Akiti Karamarjuna Wonderful. Radhe Radhe Radhe, last but not the least, Sairamji. Sairamji, Radhe Radhe, please. Radhe Radhe. Uh, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kutastva Kashma Idham Vishame Samupastitam Anarya Jushta Maswargyam Akir, Akirti Karma Arjuna. Very nice, sir. So let's get started. What God is saying. Supreme Lord said, My dear Arjun, how has this delusion overcome you in this hour of the He's not saying, all right, Arjun, I sympathize with you. I understand. It's okay. He's directly shaking him out of his comfort zone. He says, what kind of a delusion has overcome you in this hour of peril? It is not befitting for an honorable person. It leads not to the higher abodes, but to disgrace. Anyway, we'll go into the much detail later. But let's get started with some of the key concepts that we need to really reflect upon on this particular couple of shlokas, the first one at least. Now, in this chapter, Arjun, as we see, is crestfallen. So, Arjun reiterates to Shri Krishna, he's unable to cop, cope with his current situation, where he has to kill his elders and teachers. Okay. Now, he refuses to take part in such a battle, as we have seen, as he requests Krishna to be a spiritual teacher and guide him on the proper path of action. Just give me a sec. I'm seeing some problem here. All right, no, it's all sorted out now. I got that. Get back. Just a quick recap of how we landed up here. So, guide him on the proper path of action. And then, in this chapter, Lord Krishna brings in the key knowledge, divine knowledge to Arjun. He begins this chapter with the immortal nature of the soul. That is what we will discuss in more detail, not today. But I'm just giving you an overview of this chapter, some of the salient features, like I said, right? In this chapter, Krishna, first of all, goes on to introduce the concept of soul, which is eternal and imperishable. Then, and talking about death, he, he speaks about the dis clear distinction between the physical body and the soul. What, what is our true identity? Right? If you look at the right, this is how the journey goes. You know, we are born and all the way up to becoming an adult to middle age to the old man and then we reject this body this is the cycle the one thing which remains constant in this entire journey is i and that i is what lord krishna is going to introduce in this chapter who is that i so when we look at our pictures from the childhood right when some guests come we show our photo album this is you know what this is who i was so people may have a hard time believing, you know, we looked so cute when we were kids, but we know intuitively that was us only. It, that I remains constant throughout, right? Even if we, let's say somebody is imprisoned and after 20 years, the judge pronounces a judgment and tells, sends them for a capital punishment or to the gallows and that person says, no, my cells change every seven years. Science says that, biology says that. So the person who committed that crime was somebody else. So why should I, I be incarcerated? The judge will say, no, the, that I in you was the same, even though your body or your physical appearance has changed. Who is that I we really need to ponder upon and think deeply about? And that is the I that Lord Krishna has introduced. And this is a very important topic because it is going to map to what we are going to discuss. The theme of this month is fear. Okay. 
and fear is something we have all have fears and we are going to utilize the spiritual learning that we are having to conquer these things see if we have these things if we can simply keep on learning the recipes without actually making the pudding it becomes pointless so it we will make a pudding but it might be happening at a slower pace so now let's reflect on how we can accelerate that process is what we are going to focus on so keep this concept in mind we'll come back and revisit it and i'll map it to the activity that we are going to take and how we can directly translate that knowledge to help bring about the transformation that we all are seeking right all right so let's move on now in this particular case as we saw the emotions there are two types of compassion let's start with that we do feel compassionate and we we have always heard and known about that compassion is a very very no noble um, emotion the people who are wicked they don't feel compassion in fact there are four categories of people the lowest are the ones who actually revel in giving trouble to others so being compassionate is a very noble virtue it is a devic gun okay so to say however within that also there are gradations what are those let's look at that there are two types of compassion what are those two types let's look at those one is material and one is called spiritual what is material compassion material compassion is is a noble sentiment like i said that is not perfectly directed okay let's understand this we spoke about this concept of being good also when we do charity when we help people thinking that we are doing it that is a noble sentiment however it is still not perfectly directed so it is something similar it is a noble sentiment that is not perfectly directed why it is not perfectly directed let's look at it you you may say no it's a good sentiment why sh i don't see any problem with that but i'll show you what's the problem with this sentiment now spiritual compassion is perfectly directed noble sentiment okay let's move on now this is emotional attachment to body and bodily relatives this compassion is born out of attachment okay the other compassion that i'm talking about is basically from the platform of a soul compassion for the soul so if you look at it the left hand side that compassion is basically that overwhelming compassion that arjun has started feeling for his relatives like we all do it is at a bodily platform the other compassion which is at the platform of the soul only saints and god are capable of bringing about that compassion okay we can start aligning to that compassion as best as we can while we are working towards god realization how let me show add a little more color to this so that we understand now this compassion carries the burden of pain sorrow grief and death exactly the emotion that arjun is feeling right now right he's grief stricken as you look at it his eyes are tearful he's uh, you know completely uh, crest fallen so to say in this particular situation and these emotions are the ones which accompany material compassion as you would imagine right sometimes you go and listen to somebody's stories those people are having facing some tragedy in their life or not feeling good or they might be dumping you know how bad they are feeling about it and you would realize after lending that ear or that shoulder to them you also feel depressed you also feel down you start participating in their sorrow in your head very rare soul soul would look at it objectively it impacts you okay that is again a symptom of material compassion so these are the burdens it cannot you cannot do away with the other compassion it uplifts the soul it it looks at things objectively but it uplifts the soul we'll we'll look at it a little more so that it is temporary if you take pity on you on somebody and give them a crying shoulder all right they had a good good cry that alleviated their pain temporarily it's a temporary thing because the change that is needed to actually uh, counter or look at that particular situation in perspective has still not happened because it is still at the material level this is permanent if you crack something it is eternal let's say you develop some amount of dispassion and detachment from this world and you can operate from a 
spiritual compassion i'll give you some analogies it may still not be making sense you might be saying no what does it mean eternal and all i'll give you some examples around that but let's for now understand that material compassion it 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 so it has temporary effects however spiritual compassion when it is exercised and it is perfectly directed it has eternal or permanent or lasting uh, effects benefits now example here child if you look at a child child is crying and saying i want food mother refuses knowing that his stomach is upset but the child continues to insist and the mother gives in now the child gets very sick so the problem is not solved this is what happens in material compassion okay on this side the example that swami ji has given is beautiful is now in this particular case lord krishna is taking on the taking this opportunity because of the state that arjun is in you know he could have given him a crying shoulder all right yeah and i understand arjun you know they are your relatives and after all they are your blood relatives i know how hard it must be for you but still it is your duty you have to do that he is not talking like that he is actually tackling him head on as we will see in these shlokas he is simply saying this is not um, befitting of an honorable man like you that's how he tackles he just shakes him out of his like like a good teacher now lord krishna is taking this opportunity to enlighten arjun okay not giving him his shoulder the lord is going to start explaining the divine knowledge he is first creating the need for it by chiding arjun he is actually reprimanding arjun to start off with like a good teacher so he gives him a hot and cold treatment to begin with you know just so that he starts getting the point here such behavior is not befitting on him now let's look at through some more examples what material compassion is and what spiritual compassion is now this is a guy let me tell you a good story now this is a guy as you see is drowning so let's look at the story so man he was swimming in a river got caught up with the current and started to drown his wife yelled for help to surrounding people by the way i have also managed to drown in a 4 feet pool okay believe it or not so my height is much more than 4 feet but it's just the panic part of it now there came a man he said i am a social worker what else you need if there is a social worker and a man is drowning it is like dubte ko tinke ka sahara right to say so so then this guy says i help everyone of course i will save your husband and what happens he jumps into the river he gets hold of the coat of this guy and of the drowning man and brought it to his wife okay the man drowned and died wife was totally shocked so this guy did a big favor right now if you look at it this was a material compassion is a little bit like this it addresses the superficial without addressing the core need let me give you another example it is like fueling a car to feed the driver so material compassion is neither good for you nor is it good for the person to whom it is being extended to all right for the time being it's a noble sentiment god will say sadhya you did something good at least you did not hurt the person just fine but the better more perfect perfectly directed sentiment is a spiritual compassion to look at that particular thing so if somebody grieves you lend them a shoulder which is a good act but if you if you are able to enlighten them or give them that one piece of wisdom which helps them lift their soul and see those kind of things in proper perspective it is a much bigger thing that you have that that is born out of spiritual compassion it can only happen when you have floated above that platform and started aligning with the higher principles and it is considered the biggest charity you give food to somebody hunger will come back you give money to somebody they will again feel deprivation unless of course you know something big happens you give spiritual charity or bring about that change like swami ji and you know maharaj ji have done to so many of us that is considered the top most charity okay and that can only come through spiritual compassion not through material compassion when you are yourself drowning now what arjun is saying let's look at what arjun is saying in perspective okay he's he's grief stricken his mouth is drying his skin is burning all the symptoms that are happening to him and what is he saying let's look at it 
Arjun is saying that he is overcome by grief and despair, as we see, and he is himself in dire need of compassion, like we all are. We are struggling in life, to be honest. Okay, until we are, we reach a certain certain stage where we have enough enough dispassion to look at things objectively. So, in this case. the idea of him being merciful upon others is meaningless it's like that beggar saying okay you know what i'm going to treat you guys today come over for that he is himself in need of compassion how can he give compassion or bestow mercy on, on others that is a higher perspective to look at it and lord krishna is understanding it let's look at it through some other analogy when you fly right have you you been to flights the air hostess announces Put it, put on your oxygen mask before helping others. Okay, that is the key thing. When we first need to get our things sorted out before we start going out and start helping others, that doesn't mean we stop helping others. Obviously, we have to continue doing that. But the fact of the matter is, we ourselves need to arm ourselves with a lot of knowledge so that we can see things objectively and extend the compassion in a way which is truly elevating, as opposed to simply. extending a shoulder and not making it worse for them but not really curing curing the the root cause it's just that elevating a symptom for somebody that is essentially what it is and that is why what arjun is feeling is the material compassion because it is at a bodily platform what krishna is feeling or what knowledge he is going to impart now is going to be at a spiritual platform at a soul level there is a big difference between the two i hope it makes a bit of a sense now any question so far before i move to the next one now what i was saying is putting it to practice part of it we can have a bit of a discussion on this as well um you know the put on your oxygen mask before helping others this concept but before that uh, i wanted to talk a little bit about the action of the day part of it this initiative that uh, uh, i want to give uh, shri ramya the credit for that because she spoke to me i said it's a brilliant idea we keep on you know adding new things to our session so that it becomes more enriching and beneficial for everybody we added bhajans you know the devotional aspect of it and this is another thing we can spend a little bit of a time every day but it is going to be very very beneficial for for all of you what you need to do for this is it's not a whole lot that we are going to it it would require a bit of an action and a bit of an exertion from you okay every day and it's not a whole lot of activity the first need is you need to create a journal if you already don't have it anybody who's already doing that quick show of hands you can tell me that um how many of you are already having a spiritual journal okay quite a few of you are having it which is good i think it's an outstanding practice to have that um you know having your reflections because i'll tell you where it will help you if you're feeling very inspired super motivated wow what a knowledge you know this is what i want to do and this that that thing can evaporate and fritter away very quickly and the only thing that will get you back in that is journaling document your inspirations and stuff like that okay so having a spiritual journal is a must have on this path that is one thing so what we are going to do is let's get started with the journal you will love it after a year when you will look back on it you will have a smile on your face you know how far i have come and i'm so glad i started with this activity okay i'll have some participants talk about that as well having a journal and second thing that we need to do you can take a quiet moment for yourself you know close your eyes you don't have to talk about it just think about your fears we all have different kind of fears journal your fears okay this is what really freaks me out now just quiet moment give it to yourself start journaling your fears you are not doing anything about it okay we are not going to fix the fears or anything the very first step simply journal your fears write it down give it a word give it a statement verbalize it in your head okay could be any fear could be fear of uh, not getting promoted could be fear of losing your near and dear one could be an anxiety that is building up in you because you lost some near and dear one recently could be a fear of rejection from people around you your peers could be a fear of 
not being able to live up to the expectation of people around you your parents your relatives could be a fear of uh, not getting you know that that thing you always craved for that position you craved for could be a fear of not getting married and what people and you know are going to say around it could be a fear of losing that big moment that you were always waiting for could be anything and we all have our own secret stash of fears and anxieties that are some subconsciously embedded in us so let's document it and this practice is going to help us build the sakshi bhav okay the sakshi bhav or the witness consciousness it will start bringing in so verbalize it you don't have to share it with anybody but if you feel inspired that you know we will bring in some more steps as we go along but start documenting it give it give it a face to that fear as opposed to just letting it eat you from within yes yeah? put it down in a journal okay this is my fear biggest fear or these are the fears i my subconscious mind has to grapple with day in and day out and it's about time we tackle it head on and these this fear results in a lot of other emotions as well even anger to some extent is caused by some kind of a fear of having an impediment to what you thought should have been a bit thing right anger can also be caused by fear and fear anxiety is a big thing arjun is also grappling with fear right now so let's let's have our journey similar to that of arjun and see how lord krishna is going to tackle those things we will bring the bhagavad gita shloka okay this is a fear maybe fear of death we will tackle that we will spend good time on that you know if we all fear dying ourselves and more importantly um, you know losing somebody who who is near and dear to us or an experience that we have had that fear gets etched in our memory so we will tackle that fear of death is going to get tackled in this chapter here right how do we look at death how do we deal with the grief of losing a close one so we need to tackle it head on as opposed to sweeping it under the carpet right that is the real benefit of uh, doing these sessions start documenting it shiramya if you are around you wanted to add something on uh, on top of it basically when we start with some of the next steps around it okay once you have verbalized your fear what will be your next step and i will start giving you a few tips every day around on that and including the shloka stuff that will come along with it uh, but anything you wanted to add shiramya go ahead uh, radhe radhe mm-hmm. this is what i yeah, i please want go ahead. i was saying you covered it all i i don't have anything else to say here okay all right so this is the first step let's document our fears it's important we need to embrace our fears okay let's not sweep it under the carpet right there are certain fears even we don't admit to ourselves just because we are so scared of it okay so we will let's do that and we'll make it a it's it an exercise that that empowers us not not something that makes us more vulnerable or more weak that is the whole idea okay so let's let's document it get started and it's a very close group that we have it's a satsang like a family we have going on here and i'll be i'll be willing to open up the chapters or my own fears uh, on the portal the idea is let's document it and then we we share some of the learnings with others so that we have a body of knowledge that we all can uh, you know help each other out with and stuff that we feel comfortable putting on portal as well because we may after a week or a month or a year we may want to go back and say hey these are the things we tackled and these are the things that actually worked and you know it made a lot of difference that way it will we will have something tangible to refer back to as well is kumar ji you had a question please go ahead kumar ji radhe radhe everyone um they say the biggest fear or the, even the source of all fears is the fear of death mm-hmm. and uh, of course obviously that that's not a fear which can be removed in a day or two or even i don't know lifetimes mm-hmm. that's where i think our uh, uh, knowledge uh, of who we are uh, you know needs to be kind of uh, ingrained in us for us to kind of uh, do that again i i don't have answers either uh, so probably that might be another you know as part of this exercise yes. uh, we should uh, kind of uh, discuss that as well okay. thanks radhe radhe this fear actually really stems from the fact on who we really are right god is called sat chit anand sat aspect is eternal 
and so are we. But we have this fear because we, we consider ourselves to be this body. And we think the day this body perishes, everything comes to an end. Our existence comes to an end. So we will not get exact answers. Yes, we will get a good framework. How we apply it to our lives is up to us on how deep we want to do that contemplation. But definitely, this is going to provide us a lot of tools and framework around how to look at some of the things that our mind struggles with in perspective and bring about a peace around those things. So that is the whole idea about these discussions and we map it directly to Bhagavad Gita Shloka. Okay? This is what Lord Krishna is telling Arjun and this is how it translates to that. That is how we'll do that. All right. So getting back to that, there are a couple of things. So Urvi, your friend is going to recite a bhajan today, right? Okay, we'll get to that. I wanted to have a quick discussion on, on the fact, put on your oxygen mask before helping others. And before that, uh, there's another thing. So when we have a goal in life, it helps us stay focused. Okay. It helps us stay focused. So karam yoga does not mean not have goal. Karam yoga means keep things, you know, um, targets for yourself, milestones for yourself and put in your best and keep trying hard. That's what Karam Yoga means basically. Um, as opposed to thinking only if I have it, I'll be happy. Keep trying. Edison, he failed so many times. He came up with an electric bulb, right? It's not about falling down seven times. It's, it's about having the ability to get up the eighth time. And goals are important because if you play, if anybody has played soccer, I mean, I used to play a lot of soccer. So if you play soccer without a goal, it will be no fun. Will it be fun if you are just aimlessly moving around the field without a goal or something to refer to? It's not fun, right? So there were two guys who went to see a soccer match and everybody was chanting, as you would have seen in a stadium, right? Goal, goal, goal. And this guy says, you know, why are they saying goal, goal, goal? This is already goal. So anyways, goal is a Hindi word for round. So it's important to have goals. And that is where we'll set small, small goals every month. Um, tackling fear is our theme for now. We will go really deep and we will tackle some more questions and map it to the Bhagavad Gita shlokas during the journey of this chapter too. Okay. With that, anybody who wants to take this question for a quick thing before we move on to our devotional segment where Urvi's friend, she is felt so inspired that she wants to decide a beautiful bhajan today. So we want to give her an opportunity. But before that, uh, I really want to take an opportunity to have a little bit of a discussion on this concept because we do fall prey to this thing where we are lending our shoulder, hearing out things and that end up affecting us as well. Have you experienced that at all in our lives with any of our friends, family or something? Yes, Shamji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. I mean, only uh, doubt is that we all have fears, but I'll just take my case in, in, in this example that it is too hard to admit that we have fears. Maybe the fear of death is not so that much, but living a life and fearing, I don't know, we all have fears, but just to admit, acknowledge ourselves that we have fears is a big thing, at least for me. So I don't know how to <laughs> overcome that. It is for all of us, Shambhai, and that is why the first step that we are doing is write it down. Let's start acknowledging it. Okay, things will get diagnosed only when you are willing to accept that. So that is the first step and it is very liberating. Trust me on that. See, it's just like if you're watching a movie, right? You're watching a movie. So when you're participating, you are shedding tears. You are feeling the emotions that the hero, heroine, the villain are making you feel or believe in. And the moment, instead of participating, you become a spectator. Right? A lot of change starts happening. So this is the very first step of verbalizing it. Now you have taken the first step towards from being a participant to being a spectator. Right? You are trying to tell, read your mind and saying, this is what bugs me from within. Okay, let's con confront it head on. And then we'll get into some of the tools and practical aspect of it as well. So let's start with the first step on this one. It's quite it's hard. I do not know how easy it is, but for me, it's quite hard. Even nobody, though nobody is going to check your diary, Shamji. Only when I come to India, we will look take a look at your diary and I'll exchange mine. But until then, you are perfectly safe. You have to admit it to yourself. 
yes sandhya yeah. like that the hardest let's make it easy for ourselves yeah 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 radhe radhe sandhya ji please go ahead uh radhe radhe um this is regarding put on your oxygen mask before helping others um i mean this is i think i feel this is also related to you know when we are say learning something we are trying to gain some wisdom and we ourselves haven't understood it properly and we try to uh tell others in that case we can end up doing more of harm than benefit so uh i think it's important to first become that self sufficient self reliant and kind of lead by example as opposed to is going around and uh, spreading uh, half joy, knowledge joy peace and love right we we all like to spread joy peace and love right the global peace peace by peace by if if each individual peace brings in the peace within right that is how you achieve, you will achieve global peace anyway so we go out uh, trying to spread that around which is a noble thing but the key is do we really have that ability as yet we can do that in our small capacity as best as we can but we really can't go overboard until we have worked on ourselves so the buck stops at us eventually yeah it's a great realization thank you uh, for sharing that sandhya i see a few new hands let's give them sai ram ji please go ahead yes sai ram ji radhe radhe please go ahead uh, radhe radhe uh, i had a question on the journaling aspect um so i was wondering when you said you will become a spectator you're talking about like how if we journal we'll be essentially doing first steps for sakshi bab yes i see oh, okay that is very enlightening actually thank you i have never journaled anything but i was i found this kind of interesting yeah it's a very important tool on the path of spirituality having a witness consciousness witness consciousness means if it is going on in your mind and you can observe it and read it and document it you've already proven to yourself that you are not your mind right so witness when we start taking a step back and simply acknowledging it reading it analyzing it that that moment itself the change starts happening that is how powerful this tool of witness or sakshi bhav is but this is just one of the tool we'll go much deeper into the other tools as well but this is a very important tool uh to get started with let's embrace it let's confront it let's take tackle it head on whatever bugs us from within fear is a big problem we all have and the biggest fears i know right death everybody troubles losing the close one validation like i i gave a lot of examples a lot of people can relate to if something new please feel in the feedback tracker we'll tackle that as well but yes this is a very important first step that's what we want to do for now yes i have posted the link of the uh, feedback tracker in the chat please uh, put in your comments in the feedback tracker we have already created a thread on the portal if you don't have it look do check it out um, put in the stuff that you want to talk about discuss here on the session um, you know if you don't feel comfortable talking about your personal incident and stuff like that perfectly fine you can just put in it in topic that this topic you want to tackle within fear itself and we will definitely try to bring it in the session in context of with lord krishna talks about it okay all right uh, who's next uh, pallavi ji can call out padma ji radhe radhe thanks for waiting radhe radhe <clears throat> um there was a question and um few few thoughts about fears when we sit with ourselves in silence and ask ourselves our own definition of fears right when we try to generalize the definition of fear that everybody else is feeling everybody else is saying in that moment it might feel like it's working for you in your mind and you intellectualize it but when you sit in your silence your definition of fear whether you are a parent a father a mother a daughter a sister whatever this body relationships are you will identify those on a different level and that would be very different than everybody else and that is the beauty of the god that everybody's mindset and everybody's experiences are so different but yet he's so compassionate and embracing that he would just reach you where you are so you have to sit with yourself in silence and say what is your definition of fear identify what is your definition of fear first of all and then ask yourself 
is it a definition of fear that you expected something to happen and it did not happen or you are fearful that you want to try something you are not able to do it whatever your definition of which is really to your core identify what is your definition of the fear and then you can take like baby steps to say what is causing me to have that fear as nitin ji was saying and you can trace it back to three things whether it is physical or whether it is mental or whether it is spiritual also you will find yourself in situations when your spiritual sense is very very conflicted and you're trying to find answers spiritually is this right is this the dharma is it not dharma where do i stand with this am i understanding the knowledge right am i contemplating on the spiritual knowledge right that will also go that will also happen within us right that is where the bhakti comes into picture i feel where when you're conflicting your spiritual sense also and you're fearful you're fearful whether you're actually contemplating on the spiritual knowledge the way that you are supposed to um contemplate and some of the things that we can use and i feel is like okay when that spiritual knowledge is coming my way like how am i responding to that spiritual knowledge why is it conflicting how is it conflicting and sit and make those connections with god and guru and say i'm conflicted with the spiritual knowledge what is that i'm fearful of is it that i did not understand it properly is it that i misunderstood it properly whatever that spiritual confusion is you have to sit in your silence and develop that bhakti bhav for god and guru and say please help me and when you are in a position of saying i am a servant i need help i need help and that's the that's the difference i think between duryodhana and arjuna duryodhana krishna went to duryodhana and duryodhana the said i know everything i know what is right from wrong don't tell me arjuna doesn't know what is right from wrong you go and tell arjuna but when we put that bhav and say i do not understand this i'm struggling to understand this and you ask krishna i said help me understand this then whatever that fear is you will identify the fear and whatever the things that you need to do on a three different levels whether it is physical mental or spiritual sense what what does it provide for you it provides you a guide it will provide you a counsel it provides you um a consciousness it provides you an intention an intentional deliberate drive and 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 the zeal and love that you're begging god that give me that thing whether it is a fear of physical thing whether it is a fear of spiritual thing whether it is fear of emotional thing um that's what i wanted to say about fear um karma yogi obviously scriptures have beautifully have defined swami ji has defined it so well um any action any action that you convert as a works uh, worship to god but at the end after you convert your action as a worship whatever comes out of that way whatever the product comes out of the way not getting disappointed or betting getting hyperactive about it i feel like that is my definition try your best if you do not understand beg god and say you know what i am at your service at your feet i'm bowing my head at your feet i don't understand this please help me and try your best knowing what is the right thing to do sometimes we might not know that's when we have to ask him like what is the right thing to do on whatever comes you we take it because he, god has designed it so so when he has designed it when it's happening when things are happening he was like you know what he is the better designer than i am and our all our mind is and and slowly when we start to practice you just become not numb but very silent very silent like everything happens around you but you just become very silent yeah great point padma ji so at this stage of uh, this practice we will we will get into the solutioning and what works what doesn't later on this for now you can simply document it suspend your judgment around why do you have that fear just observe your fear and journal it and we'll see basically how we can tackle it and basically some of the things that padma ji spoke about it's called the systematic desensitization around anything that we can do so we are not getting into solutions right now it's a journey of course and journey can vary for different people based on their own experiences learnings realizations uh, but let's now let's take the first baby step around simply accepting it embracing it confronting it rather than hiding it under the carpet and it's your personal journal nobody is going to talk about it uh, you know let's let's just document what what makes us nervous 
you know what is it that makes you lose sleep at night and what are some of the things that you really worry about it's important to document those and see how this journey unfolds uh, over the next few weeks great okay a couple of other hands there as well um, thank you uh, I... thank you padma ji moving on ahead uh, shri ramya ji radhe radhe he's going radhe radhe regarding the question put your uh, mask on help yourself before helping others is it always true because uh, i have seen mothers they don't care about that if they first help the children i think that is the nature of uh, the mother uh, i remember once i was about to you know a cow i mean a bull was coming with some horns and and my mother pushed me and she stood that when i was a child or kid and that is the very nature of a mother so this rule is uh, overridden at some places that's what i wanted to know yeah of course even when you are operating at a bodily platform level there is a huge disparity right between a child and a mother so we have see we have to look at use it with prudence we are talking about the peers that we typically get into right with a common and a mother and a child of course there's a big gap right parents and kids it's a big gap somebody who's 80 year old might have a lot of wisdom that you could share with a 20 year old those gaps are pretty tangible so you have to use this with prudence but it's very difficult different from you talking to somebody of your age group or generally people whom we interact with there's not much of a difference right with them and then we start trying to bring about that global peace through our understanding that's not going to help on the contrary if they have a lot of negativity pessimism uh, going on in their lives it could actually get dumped on you because you are not there as well and secondly unless we have practiced those higher principles ourselves we are not even in a position to help anybody truly when you meet saints like swami ji maharaj ji their words have a profound impact on us why because it's coming from the depths of realization you have seen the truth and what they tell you it actually would make a difference in your life because not only they are telling you what is aligning to spiritual principle but also they are telling you what you need different people need different things and they understand that part they may know this much of knowledge or this much that they know eventually you need to know but if this much is needed for you to go from point a to point b where you are stuck they'll give you only that much they'll tailor it to your need so that is the advantage that they have we don't have that ability we apply our stereotypes our own framework to the rest of the world it may or may not work for people and secondly it's not coming from a depths of realization even if that realization is there that realization may not be perfect so there are a lot of variables which are here at play buck stops at us working at ourselves and then approaching these things with the best of interest and intentions and continue to work on ourselves so let's see couple of other hands uh, uh, i think manish ji had raised and uh, aarti had ji has raised as well so let's quickly take yes. them before we manish ji radhe radhe please go ahead yes manish ji radhe 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 everyone i had a question nitin ji on the uh, journaling mm -hmm. is it important to have a paper journal versus cuz what i do is uh if i see if i hear something that's really important that i feel like i need to apply it in my life that will be beneficial then i just put it in my notes on the iphone and i have like bunch of pages of notes and then i just contemplate on those on a daily basis from there is it important to have an actual written journal versus that type of thing or no, contemplation that, is contemplation contemplation is contemplation there are a lot of apps available even on mobiles i use journey from time to time uh, but for me personally sometimes noting down stuff helps as well so really depends on people whatever works for them some people you know feel much more okay. writing with both hands but there's no hard and fast rule as long as you can pull it up for your quick reference when you need it we we can leverage technology in fact there are a lot of good apps cool apps where you can document your journey as well right it can start creating some maps around it as well so feel free the idea is to verbalize yeah i just i just have an yeah sorry go ahead no oh, no please go ahead yeah i was just saying i just have a note section label bhagwan and it has all the stuff in there that i contemplate on a daily basis oh, very nice it's so very sweet of you good and we can share some good practice which have been working for them i can see some smiles here uh, yeah. journaling helps uh, but this is one of the things that would really help you like i said when you will look back at it after an year it will bring a smile to your face 
and you will be surprised to see how many learnings and reflections you have come across during this journey which comes and dissipates right it comes like a flash a bundle of energy it will come and then it will go away so just document it don't wait for it you know that will come back again that is how powerful those inspirations are at times thank you for sharing that manish yes pallavi ji had a question yes. thank you I'll, uh, thank you manish ji uh, there are suggestions for manish ji for uh, about the journal my note is also suggested as very good app uh, in the chat so great we have participants who have prior experience so yes let's yeah. i personally use a uh, a document and put it in the google drive which i can access from any of my devices wonderful whenever yeah so uh, nitin ji if i can read quickly uh, a couple of questions and chat it will be before moving forward okay. so one question came in the chat was about how can we learn recitation gita slok recitation and uh, i i'm sure if one participant has asked there could be many people who have the the new people who have this question in their mind so i want to let them know that we have uh, awesome gita recitation classes going on in jk yo uh, it is on saturdays 10:45 am cst which is um uh, cst time and india time it will be 9:15 pm saturday ist so please take advantage of it do uh, join these uh, recitation sessions you'll get advantage and you'll definitely learn uh, to recite gita shlokas and if you are for some reason constrained for time i have another formula for you okay you come to the session you raise your hand then you turn on your camera and then you recite along i have so many people here who started yes. like this and now they are they're able to recite very fluently so all lot of choices are available if you want to do it much more formally we have beautiful recitation classes that pallavi ji spoke about but even in these sessions you can take initiative and you can pleasantly surprise yourself within a span of a few months i would say or possibly weeks I have seen so many participants who who, who recite very fluently, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah tackle the fear of uh, uh, reciting Gita Shloka, right? You conquer it. It's not. Krishna is willing to help you out. You have to take that first step, and it will give me an opportunity to see you as well face to face. Okay, so that's a bonus of it as well. Okay. Yeah. And Sandhya ji has mentioned chances of missing a daily wisdom class makes me nervous. That is one of her. Uh, peers that you can document it okay and you <laughs> have to say about it okay all right and one question came out quickly um, nitin ji is about what is journaling what is it that's a good question i never thought about journaling is penning down your thoughts okay what your mind is telling you dishing out to you you simply pick part of it and say it, it is worth documenting it right for example you may get an inspiration Newton, if he had, let's say, Newton was sitting under a tree and an apple fell down, and he said, "You know what? There is some something at play here. It, there is some force." And if he had not journaled it, and if he didn't have a good memory, and he got an amnesia afterwards, he would have forgotten that inspiration. So that thought that came, if you document it and do something about it, it helps. And journaling, in this case, we are talking about is the thoughts, the fears, the anxieties. the secret stash around that be built over time let's try to put it to letters words and see it and face it that's the first step we are talking about that's what journaling means any thought that comes to your mind which is of significance either from an improvement standpoint or from an inspiration standpoint something that we need to document so that we can refer back to it as needed in our lives thank you okay. so maybe sairam ji real quick and then we move to the devotional segment today i had a few requests uh, urvi's friend i i don't want to make her wait too long yeah. i'm really waiting with bated breath for her to come and sing today so sairam ji real quick maybe you can take one question and then move on to that segment i see sam ji's hand raised also uh, can okay, i take can that? come back uh, and do that uh, let's quickly take maybe two hands then anubhuti okay. has to come on camera so two more hands we will take anubhuti and we'll to you then hope that i want to take much of your time uh, my question was is there any kind of app or something which can interface with the one note of microsoft or one note for windows microsoft 
so that I mean, I raised this question in the past also, but I never got any kind of feedback from any uh, devotee or something, anything. Because I tried lately, I've been trying to put my notes into the one note for Windows, which is a very popular this sort of section. There are pages and all those things which can interface with that. Anything anybody knows? I'll have to check it out. It's a right question to a wrong person, Samji. Uh, I'm technically challenged, although I'm. A... But he is very, very much into the journaling. I thought maybe she has any clues to this kind of thing. But anyway, I won't take much time. That's okay. Later on. Answers to Samji's question, please send it out on the chat and I'll I'll send it over to him or you can respond back here. All right. Any and Sairamji, you had a question as well. Okay, no more hands. So over to you, Anubhuti ji. Anubhuti ji. When I request somebody to do something, I, I always suffix it like I did it to Yes. Anubhuti ji, please go ahead. Let me make. So by the way, Anubhuti is pretty new to our session. And uh, maybe you can talk a little bit, introduce yourself, Anubhuti, and then we can we'll get the privilege to hear you as well. You are on mute. We can't hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, Rade Rade. Why are we not able to hear you? Not able to. Uh, she is unmuted. Radhe Radhe. Something is not right. Yeah, maybe without headphones it might cooperate. Not yet. She is already unmuted. Yeah, I can see her unmuted. You have become speechless like I was speechless when the session started. I don't know what's going on. Some technology, technical problem, I guess. So in the meantime, let's take uh, uh, anybody else. I think Sriramya wanted to do that as well while Anubhuti works out her audio stuff. Sriramya ji. Anubhuti, you can announce yourself once your audio gets fixed. Please go ahead, Sriramya ji. Radhe Radhe. Uh, Radhe Radhe. Uh, just, just give me uh, one moment, please. Uh, okay. There's a power uh, outage here, and uh, I kept the uh, lyrics ready, and I love no this. No worries, you can take your time. And in the meantime, please fill out the feedback tracker if you want to do that. We'll try to pick up, you know, three to four hands every session so that everybody gets a chance, and uh, we can do it in a time-bound manner as well. So please fill out the feedback tracker, provide your feedback on uh, you know the the session itself and anything that you would like to hear more about uh, i i would typically go through that to you know take feedback around that yes sandhya you wanted to do something actually i had just one suggestion regarding uh, journaling like people were asking some tools and specific questions right so probably in the community portal we can create a segment around this where people can share what tools they are using and they can also share their doubts and others can answer from their experience. That will be wonderful. Yeah, that will be, a, like I said, it will be a living, breathing document or knowledge base we can create that all of us can tap into and contribute towards. So it's just like contributing something that somebody can help get help from. It's like crowdsourcing our spiritual knowledge, uh, you know, for practical implementation. It's a wonderful idea. And I've already created a thread Please do check it out if not already and, and it would be good if you start contributing towards it. And I'll be requesting a few participants uh, who have expressed interest in doing Seva to uh, share the weekly summaries or daily insights from our session as well. Those will be wonderful as well. Um, so I'll be speaking to them in person so that we can get that started as well. So portal is going to be a great resource as we go now. Do check it out. Manubhuti, is your audio fixed now? Anubhuti ji. Or maybe not. You may want to do a drive. Yeah. Uh, Sri Ramya ji message that she is ready. All right. Sri Ramya. Go ahead. We'll go ahead and take Sri Ramya ji. Anubhuti, you can do a dry run with Urvi to see if your audio gets fixed. Radhi Radhi Sri Ramya ji. Please go ahead. Uh, Radhi Radhi. I'm audible. 
Yes, yes, you are. Okay. Okay. Rade Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Rade Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite Damo Tararati Vardhana Vete Damo Tararati Vardhana Vete Hari Nishpur Tavrin Daviti Neshe Hari Nishpur Tavrin Daviti Neshe Prisha Pano Tadi Navasha Shileke Prisha Pano Tadi Navasha Shileke Lalita Saki Guna Ramita Vishake Lalita Saki Guna Ramita Vishake Karunam Kurumahi Karuna Barite Karunam Kurumahi Karuna Barite Sanaka Sanatana Varnita Charite Sanaka Sanatana Varnita Charite Rade Jaya Jaya Madava Daite Rade Jaya Jaya Madava Daite Thank you, Sri Ramya. That was very nice. And all the flood situation and the happenings near your house has not dampened your spirit to sing, you know, devotionally. So it's very nice. And we wish uh, things get better at your end sooner than later. It's a bit of a contingency, I know, that's happening there. Thank you so much for your beautiful singing. So let's have four hands today. So let's. Anubhuti ji is ready. That's what uh, she messaged. Anubhuti, yes. Go ahead, Anubhuti. Yeah. I've unmuted Anubhuti ji. Please go ahead. Not. The audio is still not working. Something is not right. <laughs> Something is not right. Okay. So let's move on to Swati. Yes. And files we can quickly and hopefully. We can come back again. Yeah. Swati, Swati ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. I have five to six lines to sing a small bhajan. It's not of Maharaji, but usually I sing of Maharaji because I listen that more. This is a little different. Okay, Radhe Radhe. Vrindavan ki galin galin ne pasik naam mila Vrindavan ki galin galin me बस एक नाम मिला जिसने बोला राधे राधे उसको शाम मिला जिसने बोला राधे राधे उसको शाम मिला गूंज रहा है नाम लाडली काहर कण कण में राधे नाम सुनाई देता कृष्ण की धड़कन में राधे जी के नाम को सुनकर मुरझा फूल खिला वृंदावन की गलिन गलिन में बस एक नाम मिला जिसने बोला राधे राधे उसको शाम मिला राधे कृष्ण राधे कृष्ण 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 राधे 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 शाम राधे श्यामा शाम श्यामा राधे राधे थैंक यू राधे राधे थैंक यू स्वाति जी यू ब्रॉट लॉट ऑफ स्माइल्स टू लॉट ऑफ फेसेस एंड श्याम जी वॉज ऑल्सो स्माइलिंग Beautiful bhajan. Thank you so much for that. All right. So we're down to our last two hands. Hopefully Anubhuti thing gets fixed today as well. Bit of a technical challenge on her. Yes, Padma ji. Wanted to sing as well. And then Payal ji is all set. So. Right. Anubhuti ji, uh, it's not working. I was waiting. No, it's not working. Oh. <coughs> this is Ma Parvati because this Radha Krishna, um, Radhika's um, 
जागो भैरवी आज अंत करण में जागो भैरवी आज अंत करण में हिया में सदा राज जीवन मरण में हिया में सदा राज जीवन मरण में करुणा मई मात छोड़ नहीं हाथ करुणा मई मात छोड़ नहीं हाथ रहे तू सदा साथ निश जागरण में रहे तू सदा साथ निश जागरण में भव जलदी अति घोर माया पवन जोर भव जलदी अति घोर माया पवन जोर तू ही तरुणी एक बव संतरण में तू ही तरुणी एक भव संतरण में हे नाव मजदार अब तो करो पार हे नाव मजदार अब तो करो पार हम तुम कुशल कौन पतित पवन है हम तुम कुशल कौन पतित पवन है मैं दीन अज्ञात तेरी कुसंतान मैं दीन अज्ञात तेरी कुसंतान तुझको जननी जान आया शरण में तुझको जननी जान आया शरण में ना भक्ति ना ज्ञान कैसे करू ध्यान ना भक्ति ना ज्ञान कैसे करू ध्यान देना मुझको स्थान कृपया चरण में देना मुझको स्थान कृपया चरण में जागो भैरवे जागो भैरवे आज अंत करण में हिया में सदा राज जीवन मरण में जीवन मरण में राजा राधे थैंक यू पदमा जी वेरी नाइस वेरी सोलफुल रेडिशन वेरी सोलफुल वंडरफुल ऑल राइट सो do we have okay pail ji or anubhuti is urvi messages that it's not working for anubhuti today she will try tomorrow oh, again no worries tomorrow i think we will we can try it out tomorrow so pail ji let's have the cherry on the top for today's session with your bhajan for the day thank you so much uh, nitin ji and pallavi ji Uh, so yesterday i was uh, listening to one of the uh, swami ji's lecture and uh, i came across these lines so i would just like to uh, recite <clears throat> baatan mein ghatan mein bhitan mein bagan mein vrikshan mein belan mein baatika mein van mein 
धरन में दीवारन में देहरी दरी चन में धीरन में हारन में भूषण में तन में गोकुल में गायन में गोपिन में गोपन में यही ब्रज मंडल के रेणु के कण कण में जहा जहा देखु तहा श्याम दी श्याम ही दिखाई देत मेरो श्याम छायु रही नैनन में मन में थैंक यू सो मच राधे राधे and uddhav says is that everywhere we see shyam and get dekhu tit shyam mein hi hai and narad ji once he wondered what kind of meditation gopis do so there was a gopi who was like she was doing a reverse meditation what is that trying to take krishna off her mind he said wherever i take my mind this this guy comes and troubles me so i and how will i work so i am doing a practice I- I am. I am also going through the same sentiments, uh, <laughs> Nitin ji. Whole day, entire day, Krishna just doesn't seems to be leaving me at all. All the time he is in my like whatever I do, whatever all the time. Why do and... Krishna was say go and meet some other participants from our daily <laughs> session as well? Okay, all of all of them are waiting for you. We may have to come to Rajasthan. I think there is something in Rajasthan there. Where Krishna has some special grace, right? Yesterday we saw Ruby, now we see you, and then some people have met Amira Bai as well, I believe. So something special is there for sure. But thank you so much for that. You are very, very inspiring, and the, your devotion we can it's pretty palpable. So it, it, it's very inspirational. Thank you for that, Palji. Yes, Ruby, you wanted to sing on your friend's behalf today. Yes, Radhe Radhe or Pichi, please go ahead. Uh, I want to sing a few lines of "Tum Mere Thee Mere Ho Mere Ra Ho." All right, sure, go ahead. Tum Mere Thee Mere Ho Mere Ra Ho Ge Beh Kunab Beh Kani Se. जब समझ प्रेम में डूब गई तब क्या होगा समझाने से तुमको ही तन मन धन अर्पण तुम ही मेरे जीवन धन तुमको ही तन मन धन अर्पण तुम ही मेरे जीवन धन वे दो ऐसी मेरा वेदना मिट जाए और मित was very devotional it's a beautiful bhajan by maharaj ji lot of tattva gyan lot of devotion and lot to learn from this bhajan for sure right great like i said we 
I'm going to speak only if it improves the quality of silence, but it has been so beautiful that we can simply wrap it up and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to discuss a very important topic that is, uh, what is the difference between doubt and skepticism? Right? We need to clarify our doubts. And at yet, where is the line where it crosses over to become a skepticism? And what does Lord Krishna has to say about this topic? We will try to deal with that tomorrow. Right? This journey is going to be beautiful because second chapter is, is I loved when we did this entire session. So because I will get to relive it, there are so many concepts in this chapter that uh, I'm sure a lot of participants who have joined new will love it. So we will go easy on those and take our own time for that. And Levani ji, Sandhya ji and Ramachandran ji, thank you for turning on your cameras today. It's a pleasure seeing you. Levani ji, where are you joining us from? Oh, you are on fun. Yeah, let me. Uh, yeah. Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Yeah. I'm joining from New York. I'm oh, glad, so glad to see you again. It's so late. <laughs> Virtually this time. Yeah, it's so late. I, you, but uh, I'm glad you could make it. Yeah. And it's good to see you. I enjoyed your lecture. <laughs> it was well, very interesting. Understood. Yeah, I actually also have so many fears. And... <laughs> Yeah, the, your lecture was really beneficial. Like, I must face them, not avoid them. We will all face and we will all see we are here in this together and we are here to walk each other home. Okay, that is yeah. okay. And let's let's put it to practice. Fear is something that, that puts us down basically. And it, if we start confronting them yeah. and crack the framework around how to see them, it's a huge jump we can take. Sure. Can I share my, my experience about this? Sure. Uh, I think I thought that like for years I have not experienced any fear, but I think that some of the fear were on like a very subconscious level and like they start to like uh, come on top uh, with like more engaging in spirituality. So it, it, it became like obvious and I think this is the right time to like face them. <laughs> Let's face them. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Pleasure to have you, you Nevanji. We will love to hear more from you as we go through this, uh, you know, wonderful journey. Together. Yeah, when I'll back, get, get back to my country, your uh, lecture will be at 6 a.m. <laughs> so I hope you it will improve my regimen. <laughs> I'll try to uh, still get on your lectures and wake up early. Sure, sure. Yeah, 6 a.m. is not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, Please do keep coming in regularly and you, you would you would see it. So we have a wonderful grub and you'll be able to feed off yeah. each other's energies as you can see, right? So many faces yeah. and even the faces that you don't see on the camera, they are also giving you positive energy. I'm telling you that. I, I feel it in, regardless of the <laughs> yeah. so It's going to be awesome. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. And thank you, Sandhya Ji. It's good to see you always. And one of the days we need to hear you as well. I know you are a very good singer. We have heard you a couple of times and you can prepare on one of the days. So look forward to hearing you from, from you as well. So please fill out the feedback tracker if not already. Uh, provide your feedback and a, your interest if you are looking at singing something tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for another engaging session. So have a wonderful day. Great rest of your evening. And yeah. think about our fears, okay? And start documenting those. Can we do our closing play prayers? Who Nathan? wants to do that? You can do that. Yes, let's do that. Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschitu Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Great rest of the evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Nitinji, for an awesome session. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed night. See you tomorrow, everyone. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe.